The beauty industry is growing faster than ever before. Today, it's valued at an estimated 532 billion and growing. As skincare products surge in popularity, there is an increased interest in organic and natural products. And our next guest, Oren Lavi, the founder of Soapology, is leading this trend. His soaps and body products are handmade using natural ingredients from all over the world. And today he's going to talk to us about how he grew this idea into a successful Manhattan storefront. Oren, welcome to the show. Hi, hi, hi. How are you? It's so great to have you here, especially since I am a customer. I love your products. Um, Thank you. They're so high quality. And I really would love if you could just introduce what Soapology is, um, because a lot of the viewers may not know. And hopefully when they're in New York, they can actually come and uh, see the store firsthand or shop online. So tell us about Soapology. Okay. So Soapology basically is my uh, passion, my boutique shop. Uh, soap shop that I opened in 2007. Uh, it's located on the Midpeg district. Uh, uh, basically, we create uh, what we are specialized in to create different fragrances for people. So what is unique in our store is that you can basically choose your own fragrance, your own smell, and we basically put it on the buttercream or the scrubs or in many different other products that we have in the store. We're using mostly uh, organic and natural ingredients and it's just an experience. It's, uh, it, it's just like that you're going to the uh, 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 salad uh, shop that you create your own salad and you know exactly what you want inside and what you don't want inside. So we doing that with skincare, which is very unique. You not really can find something like that everywhere. I don't know if at all, but... Uh, yeah, it certainly is very customizable. And I think your example of the salad bar summarizes it perfectly. And the way I actually discovered your store was very organically, which goes kind of with your organic products. I was walking by in New York and I noticed this beautiful storefront. Everything is brick and just so like rustic looking. You have all these jars on uh, stacked along the walls. It's so stunningly beautiful. I believe you even have an old-fashioned bathtub. Do you still have that in the back of it where you can actually try there things firsthand? Two. We have two bathtubs actually. Two? Wow. wow. Okay. So there you go. And no. so I walked in, I was overwhelmed with the smell it was so fantastic. And um, one of your uh, employees came up and said, would you like to try some things? And so she showed me some of your scrubs, which I still use today, by the way. I use your uh, creamy scrub every single night. From there, that was it. I was hooked and I've been shopping ever since. So I'd love to hear more about how you came up with this idea, because as someone walking into the store, it's such a cohesive, well thought out um, institution that you have. So. What was your process? Let's talk about like dreaming this idea. When did you first come up with the concept for Soapology? First of all, the inspiration was uh, apothecary. I very like the old fashioned uh, skincare. Just something about, okay, I'm a big fan of uh, flea markets. So I flea markets every weekend for so many years. And it's one of my, it's, it's just so, so fun to see how everything was made and built back in the day. There were, it was so much thought, passion and love into even little packaging or everything. They make everything to last forever. So I wanted to basically bring this old look, old feeling, with uh, what the people need these days, which is fresh, uh, the, uh, uh, what did we just say to create people's hands. And uh, this, this is basically my, my inspiration. And uh, you definitely see that when you walk in the store, it feels like a apothecary. But yeah. why skincare? Out of all of the different categories you could choose, you, you chose skincare. And why is that? I always have, Okay, skincare, we're going to go back to it, but 
I used to, I, I love cooking. And you know, cooking, process of cooking and process of making soap or even baking, it's kind of similar. Not exactly similar, but it's like involved the same, the same uh, technique and, and, and- Yeah, and you have to make recipes to make your products similar. Exactly, and even though when I'm cooking, I make sure everything is so beautiful because for me, the beauty, it's number one thing, you know? It was, okay, I came from Israel. In Israel, back 15 years ago, when I opened it, uh, it was very popular to open a uh, skincare boutique for some, in some, in some, uh, some times. And I thought that I can just do it uh, nicer and better here in New York. And you have a store in Israel? In Israel, I had a little coffee in Tel Aviv, actually. I was making a little, like a little bakery shop. So it sounds like you've always been an entrepreneur. This isn't your first venture. Yes, I, I was, uh, one more thing is that I was selling before that in New York, I was selling jewelry on the street and I was making everything. And so I and was- And you always, made everything uh, by hand uh, with the jewelry? Uh, uh, yeah, in, in high school, I study. Okay, so in high school, I study how to be a hairstylist. Wow. You've hairstylist, covered everything. <laughs> the first year, you study hairstylist and fashion. Mm -hmm. Two teachers, they, were, they was both fighting about me. They, they both want me to choose uh, what, did they what did they teach. So the uh, hairstylist teacher fight for me to study hairstyle. And wow. they are design teacher fight that I'm going to study uh, fashion design. Essentially, you're an artist. It's just whatever you're currently interested in is where you put your passions. So right okay. now it's skincare. Yes, exactly. I think that it's a skincare. It's a little, a little bit of everything. It's a little bit of uh, because it's combined also beauty because, you know, you have to make it beautiful and you have to make the, uh, the label, the label beautiful and you have to Right, uh, the right packaging, and then of course you have to choose the right ingredients. So and that's cooking. So yes, you're yes. checking that one off. <laughs> yes, exactly. This this is what I feel. So I think that it's it's going pretty well so far. You know, I've been uh, I've been around for a couple of uh, years, a little more, a little bit more. But uh, yeah, people people love it and. Uh, yeah, well, I certainly love it. So tell me about what is the first thing you did after you came up with the idea for Soapology? So the first thing that I did basically is uh, to find the right uh, recipes. Okay, it's actually not was a recipe. It's to find what people like. So yeah, how do you figure that out? Just like you find what is the best recipe to make uh, cheesecake you know i love how you keep relating this back to food because <laughs> it very much feels like that it is a recipe you're creating and i think part of the reason why all of your products smell so good is because you think about how they feel how they smell how they look you're thinking you have the five senses and everything the little bit of flip the touch it's everything my husband always says that. He's like, the most important ingredient in cooking is love. And I always roll my eyes because I'm like, oh, come on. But you know, it makes a difference. <laughs> totally makes a difference. So Oren, tell me, why did you name it Sopology? Sopology. So I didn't even know how strong name can be. And name of a brand, it can be so powerful. And I didn't know how powerful is Sopology until I was actually standing next to my storefront and listen, everybody that's walking down the street and looking at the store saying the name. It's, it's, it's so powerful because, you know, it's not that you passing by every store and you're saying the name of it, you know, but something about, something about soap and ology sound very, very, very right very right it also fits the image when you see the storefront yeah exactly it's kind of vintagey it's the study of soap and uh it's just rolling uh, very uh, something about it it's uh so i think that this is j just the name did like great great job you know so as the as the founder of soapology 
if someone goes into the store, what is your favorite product there? And maybe what's something you think everyone needs to try? Um, okay, so the Dead Sea Soul Scrub is amazing. The Dead Sea Soul Scrub, it's a little bit more oily. So it's leaving a residue on your skin and it's making your skin really, really, really soft and amazing. Uh, there is vitamin E inside, jojoba oil, and other amazing natural ingredients that make your skin beautiful. As long with the soul that uh, gets rid of the dead skin and then your skin. Wow, I'm gonna have to go pick that up next. <laughs> so you started making it in your house, but today you have a factory. How do you go from making something by hand in your, in your house to making sure the quality is as good when you're more mass producing something in a factory? Even though that we have a factory, we're making very small budgets and we're not, we're not doing like, we have the concept of basically every day we're getting uh, email from the shop, what that, uh, what that we're basically getting low on and we're making it in a small budget. So everything is it's, everything it's fresh and uh, we have the exactly amount of uh, ingredient that you have to put on everything. So basically to move to a factory was just more comfortable. In and everything is still handmade, I believe, right? Everything is handmade. Everything is handmade. Everything is handpicked. So, okay, you've created these products. You know that uh, they're great products. You've tried them on yourself, maybe some family, some friends. You have a variety of different products. So what's the next step here? How do you market these products? How do you get attention on them? Did you start a storefront first? Did you start selling from your house? Talk about that process. Okay, so basically after that I choose the, the recipes and the ingredients, it was the time to choose the, the location. Then I start to look for a store in New York, which is not easy, you know? No, it's, please tell me. Okay, so I was looking at the prices of storefronts in New York. It is scary. Yeah. <laughs> to say the least. No sense. Make no sense. The prices are very expensive to rent a storefront in New York. Very expensive. Very high. And then to find the, the right location and the right size, you have to combine a couple of things together, which is not making it easy. But um, uh, very important, the location. So I imagine, yeah, it's very difficult to find the perfect place within a budget that you can afford. And most likely it's very expensive. So you have to pay for the storefront. You have to pay for all the products. You have to pay for the labeling. You have to pay for all of these different elements. Yeah, but you know, in life you take risk. So I believe that it's gonna work. That's such a great entrepreneurial mindset you have. I think all entrepreneurs are like, I believe in this idea. I know it's going to work. And it's about believing in yourself. And <laughs> sometimes you lose, but it's totally okay. You know, Love even, that. You know even, even very wealthy people that you see today and you're like, wow, you know, like how you did it. They're going to tell you a lot of failure, failure stories, you know, everything worked out amazing every time that never happens. <laughs> Or that they lost and they go through some struggling and it's not was easy. But uh, if you believe in something and you love something and uh, you have to put all of uh, all of all of all of the eggs in one basket, you know, even if you can break them all, you know. Yeah. If that even if you're gonna, break, I I've no, I'm I'm not scared because if if I'm not gonna put, if I'm not gonna try, I'm never gonna know. And if you don't try, then you're never going to get it anyway. Let's talk about marketing. I know that you're a creator, so marketing isn't exactly your favorite topic, but it is important when you're building a business. So what are some of the tactics that you use to market Sopology? Social media, online marketing, things like this. Okay, so basically uh, in the store, the marketing is um, basically we're giving everybody the uh, hand wash. Yeah, you get to feel the product firsthand. Yeah, that definitely, actually that's what sold me to buy the first product. So congratulations, it worked. <laughs> so we make sure that people feel the, the product because when you feel the product, you just can't uh, uh, refuse to buy it. It feels so good and uh, 
We are also giving a lot of samples on the streets to people, handling it to them outside the, the shop. What about <laughs> online marketing? Online marketing. So we definitely try to keep all, everybody that's coming into the store, we try to keep uh, in touch with. So uh, we're taking everybody email and uh, we have a promotion from time to time and we're sending them emails with all of the, uh, we have different sales and um, basically the other way to, for marketing, it's we're doing Facebook, like everybody else, of course, and Instagram. It sounds like most of your marketing, though, is word of mouth marketing, where someone tries it like me, and then I tell it about tell it to a friend. It's kind of fun today to to meet a business that mainly relies on word of mouth marketing, because if you're successful just through that way, it says a lot about the quality of your products. Thank you. I, I, I think so. Yeah. So with coronavirus, we've had to change a lot about how we run our business. And I know that storefronts in New York City and around the country have had to shut down. Yeah. So that can tremendously impact a business, especially one like yours that really does rely on walk, people walking into the store and word of mouth marketing uh, and samples. How have you guys been impacted and what are you doing to make sure that you will be successful long term. So you're going to be surprised. Uh, the pandemic uh, wasn't so bad to us. That's great. Congratulations. That's a rare occurrence. <laughs> we sold online just as much that we're selling on the retail store, which was Parmande's uh, grow up online sales. Uh, people. Yeah, I mean, we're selling skincare products, so everybody needs soap. So did this make you rethink your storefront model at all? It's make me think that online, it's everything today. You see how many people can, can go by the store, even if it's uh, in the middle of the city of New York, you get I don't know, maybe 100,000 a day, but online you can get millions if you're just going to do the right things. Exactly. There's no limit because people can order it from all over the world instead of having to go to the store to purchase the product. So have you changed your storefront model at all then? Uh, actually, the store, we just did the beautiful renovation just now because that it was closed for so long. The store is a store and the online is online. With the tourists not being here, it's, it's impacted a lot of stores in the city because tourism is a major industry in New York. We have 65 million tourists a year. And if you remove that, I mean, it's a tremendous decrease in sales and all different types of things. So you are very lucky that uh, your online sales have really picked up. And I think moving forward, as the pandemic ends, you'll see that your business will be more successful because now you have online, you have in-store, instead of that, mainly relying on your in-store presence. Sometimes you need to, uh, to, get, to get a hit that you know that something, you're not doing something right. Yeah, you, yeah, that's such a good way to think about it. That's kind of like how I've been looking at it as, you know, this pandemic has been terrible for so many businesses, but maybe this is an opportunity to grow stronger so that once we emerge out of it, we'll be even more successful than we were because we're going to build up new revenue streams that we mm -hmm. didn't have before. So what would you like to improve about your business this year? One of the things that I would really like to do is maybe uh, to go partnership with one of the big, big department stores. and. Uh... Oh, that would be huge for you. Yeah. Oren, is there anything else? that uh, you want to share before we end this interview? Maybe um, something that you would want to tell future entrepreneurs about starting their business? Uh, don't give up. Do it with all of the passion and uh, love that you can. Uh, don't, uh, don't be scared. And even if it's not going to be good today, maybe it's going to be good tomorrow, but don't give up. 
That's beautiful. Well, thank you so much, Oren, for being on the show. It was so wonderful having you. And thank you to everyone who's been watching or listening. Now, if you want to learn more about Soapology, you can visit SoapologyNYC.com or you can follow them on Instagram at Soapology underscore NYC. And of course, you can visit their store in real life in New York. So that is all for this episode of School of Hustle. Keep up with all of our episodes on YouTube and anywhere you can stream or listen to podcasts. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a like, subscribe, share with friends, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.